Hey. <laughs> He's gonna make me host in a second. You can back up further. You can see yourself up there. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started, everybody. I would up. Hey yo. Hey, Bill Link. Hey, how I you doing? It. Good. I was going to email it. you about something. I'm sorry, what? I said I need to email you about something. All right. I will accept that. <laughs> I guess you can mute them for a minute till we uh sure. okay. okay, we're gonna go ahead and start. We had a little flag. the flag, United States of America, and the for which is God divisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, you may be seated. Thanks for coming back. But it's kind of nice. It's kind of hard to be inside sometimes when it's this nice. Um, just wanted to start off with the treasures report. I received this from Steve. So an updated treasure report. As of today, it's $927.86. So it looks like we've got a few paid members their, um, dues. And so that's Official total again five thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars and eighty-six cents as of May thirty-first, twenty twenty-three. Yes. I'm pretty sure I saw one of these. Okay. So you can actually go online and pay it through PayPal, or you can write a check. Um, is there is there any other? <laughs> uh, is, do we have like a access to like a credit card on online? Okay, so if not online, you can leave a check or, or you can pay cash money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think it's 60 bucks now. Yeah, 60 bucks now, yeah. We just talked about membership. We just gave the treasury report. There's a lot of interesting things going on. There's a lot of conventions going on. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, there's a convention going on in June, July, August, and September. So conventions everywhere. But before we get started, we are there any other things that I, I should have pointed out? I guess this part of this. Um, Bill, did you have anything on the website, kits, and things of that nature? Um, everything's going good with the website. We um have gotten a lot of hits on our uh, homepage during this month. I think 300 some hits, which is good. Um, our tech manuals are doing very well. Many, many hits there. So at least we know that our site is being visited and people are using it, which is a very good thing. Um, as far as the newsletter goes, we're done now until September, but uh, I'm just gonna encourage anyone who wants to submit anything, some tech tips, a tiny article, a few paragraphs would be okay. That's that's fine too. Just simply submit that to me and we'll, we'll be able to put it in. Now, I know we don't have anything going on for two months, but if you could submit anything between now and then, that would be great. I'll send out a notice right before it's due uh, in September, but I know most people, they're gonna wait till the very last minute, just like in school, a teacher will give you an assignment <laughs> three months in advance and no one does it until the night before. So you know, I'll say it again, submit early, nobody will. So I'll remind you two weeks ahead of time and maybe we'll get you to submit something for us. Otherwise, everything else is good. And I was gonna talk about the uh, August convention for ALOA for education and the automotive in uh, uh, September, but I'll leave that up to you since you're gonna cover that later. There's a lot of educational opportunities out there, so take advantage of it. That's all. Thanks, Bill. That's the voice of experience. So he was an educator for many years, so 
he knows about submitting articles on how people wait till the last minute, kind of human nature. But right. thank you so much, Bill. Appreciate that. Sure, sure. Um, at this time, we won't delay it. We have a guest here, Donna Nagel from Remote Recycle. She's going to talk a little bit about how it can be recycled and what she does and what state she's uh, as far as covering and things of that nature. So again, Donna, is it Nagel? I got it right, Donna Nagel. Let's let's receive her. Yes. We can't hear you. We cannot hear you. Okay, is that better? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, we we buy key fab remotes. Our company is called Remote Recycle, but our parent company is All Keys Group. So any old keys, broken keys, whatever kind of remotes you may have. So you can mail them to us. We also have people like me who I go to Michigan, Ohio, Canada, certain parts, um, and a little bit of Florida and a little bit of Indiana. That's my territory and we have other reps, but if you want, you can mail them to us and we can help send you a label. Um, there are a few we don't buy, uh, Volvos and Mercedes. Um, so any key fabs, we'll pay you for them. So instead of putting them in the trash, you can use them. Um, you can also go to our website, which is called keyinnovations.com. If you ever want to buy key fabs from us. We are also in Ace Hardware. We used to be in Best Buy. I don't know if we're still there because I, I think they were having an issue. And if you also need used ones, I sell those because I just have a bunch of them. But I know some lasses get chips out and reuse them. So I have a bunch of those if anybody wants them. But I did bring business cards and stuff tonight if anybody wants a business card so any questions okay go ahead i live in clinton township so i just go out of my house and go around the whole state uh, Uh, we have set prices pretty much, and also it depends. On, you know, if it's a little bit, you know, and typically it's like a dollar to thirty dollars per fab that we can do. Venmo, cash, or a check if you let us know in advance. Most people just want cash, so. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, so lately, I just, I've met a few last in Michigan, so I just put a bit of it. We can't hear you again. And the sound is breaking up. Everything that's being said is broken up. It's hard to hear. Might be a bad internet connection. No sound. You think it's the mic or you think it's the connection? Otherwise, I can we're working on the sound, guys. 
Also, remember when you guys talk from the back of the room, we cannot hear your questions at all, just so you know that. How's it working now? Okay. Okay, so um, also, yeah, um, as far as you shipping them, you could just let me know if you need a label or you can ship them to me. And then what we do is determine a price. I make sure it's okay with you. And then we send you a check. So it's pretty easy. Yeah, I was thinking in terms of maybe some of the mobile guys that would you need them a certain place or? I could, yeah, I could set it up. Um, people from out of state, obviously they'd have to mail them. Well, except for Florida, there's, I do do a certain area of Florida in the winter. And it's usually like Fort Myers to Port Charlotte, like twice a year I go there. But otherwise I'm just a Midwest rep, so. Um, our company does in Chicago. So they go through them and then they determine really which ones are good and bad for us. Cause they, you know, and then they rebuild them, put new batteries in, new buttons, whatever it needs. What's the uh, liability? Uh, it's a hundred percent or we'll give you your money back. Well, that's not my area of expertise with the company. I've just been a buyer of fabs, but I will tell you, I've got other Lacksmith customers and they're pretty happy. For a while, when we bought a bunch of other companies, they had a few issues with shipping and being on time, but I think they worked it all out. So I think, you know, you would be happy if you tried it. I would say 50% cheaper. Oh, okay. The question is, um, is, is it a lot? What's the price difference between OEM and buying from Key Innovations? And it's about 50% cheaper. So any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Donna, appreciate that. So anyone is looking to trade in some fob, you got a whole bunch of boxes. See Donna, we'll leave her information online. We're also showing her card on, and we can also put it into the, I guess, can we put it into the chat? I see Jennifer is here, but, um, you want to say anything? <laughs> or should I, 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 I try to call you up because I know sometimes you got places to go and you got kids and kids come out of school. So, <laughs> so we have Jennifer from Wesco, right? Did I get it right? Okay. I want to say Annexter Wesco. Annexter, yeah. Right? All right. I really like that. Do I have to push a button or are we everything? Push the button? Okay. No? Okay. Just hold it. Everybody hear me? Hey, Sam. Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. How are also, you? Good, good. I wanted to say hi to Don, and, and uh, I'm glad she was able to, to make it out there. I believe uh, she reached out to me initially and then perhaps to uh, John Hubel. Can you hear me okay? Or? Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> hey Donna, glad you're able to make Thank it. Thank you out. for the connection. Yeah. Thank you. It is. It is a reunion with Sam. We don't ever see Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a lot. Just wanted to let you guys know we are going to have an event at our Stevenson um, Highway facility. 
uh, it's going to be some food trucks and um, a bunch of vendors. We're looking probably sometime in August, beginning of September, something like that. So be on the lookout for that information. What's that? Right. I think so. We're going to get a couple food trucks, have some cornhole competitions and just kind of hang out. So um, I'll send and <laughs> <laughs> you come see me no I'm just kidding <laughs> but um would love to see you guys there and I will send out information of course when we have more that's all I got thanks guys I, I do have my specials here I'll pass out yes I'm to Cleveland sometime tell us, tell you about John Hubel let me put another Oreo in my mouth <laughs> thank you Jennifer at this time, we're going to have Marty come on up. He's got some some goodies and good things to tell us. Marty is a locksmith; been a locksmith for a little while now. Come on up, Marty, from American Lock and Key. I'm passing the mic. So you just clip, clip it on. I would just like. I am very be here. <laughs> I thought that was funny. We can't hear you again. You don't hit buttons. It is supposed to light up. I did hit the button when I put it on. Can you hear me okay? Now we can. This lady called me up and said, uh, I'm going to unlock my car. She had a Mercedes or a, a BMW, I don't remember which. But apparently this particular one, she locked her keys in her car. She had a spare. The spare, the battery went dead. And it was one of those that the batteries actually welded or soldered, soldered into place. Know what I'm talking about? Which one that is? Yeah. You, you can't pop the battery out and just put a new one in. You have to go to the dealership to get a new battery. So I showed up and uh, she said, yeah, I got a, another key, but it don't work. The battery's dead and, and I didn't go to the uh, dealership. Thank you. And uh, I said, well, go get it. Let me see it. So she goes in the house, gets the key, comes back out. And it's in a sandwich bag, all torn apart because her husband tried to fix it. And I took the bag, I went over to the car, pulled the blade out of the bag, unlocked the door, put it back in the bag and went back and go, there you go, you're unlocked. She had a big surprise look at her face and said, how do you do that? Well, I used the key and she forgot that you can actually use a key. <laughs> uh, the other job that I had, it was a 2017 Ford Transit, but it was actually an armored car. The unique thing about it was it was full of marijuana. It was at one of the uh, dispensaries. It actually had armed guards. And not only did they lock their key in, they locked their spare key in there. <laughs> so if, 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 if anybody here unlocked an armored car before? Never. Okay, it, it's right on one of the, the waves of the door, you, you can't use the VIN and cut a key because it's a medical lock. Um, and, and so the only way to bypass this and get in is to drill out the medical lock. Well, the plate, and there's four bolts going all the way through and the medical lock right in the middle of the door. So, Tried to drill out the medical lock in the sidebar. And I was I was tearing up bits left and right. And I turned the plate so the plate is free, but the lock is still in place. And I think they they have the a, I 
up there is just enough of the face of the lock, just a touch to get the door to unlock. So that's how I bypassed it and got into it. So, so I probably didn't need to drill any of it. I grind off the four bolts, push through, twist it just enough that the tailpiece actually physically unlocks the door. Turn it back, put it turn back. That's how I did it. So in case you're ever wondering. We, we missed most of that. Could you repeat it, please? <laughs> the sound is cutting out intermittently. Can you guys hear me a little better now? Yeah, but we wanted to hear his story again. <laughs> so his story, to, to put in a nutshell, he had an armored truck that he had to get into, and it had medical locks on it. And he started to drill the medical lock out at the three o'clock position. He kept breaking drill bits. So therefore he went with plan B, which was to cut off the bolts that mount, four bolts that mount over the, the medical lock. And he was able to grab a hold of the lock and turn it slightly to get the door open. I guess the, the part that I didn't get was, how did you repair this? Did you repair it? Okay, so your, your job was just to get them in. Okay, so he was able to get them in by doing that. So if you ever deal with armored trucks that have medical locks and it has some sort of cover plate, shield plate, protective plate, you may want to try something else if you don't have the bits sharp enough or the proper bit to open it. Okay, now these were carbide bits or, okay. So it was a tough job. So he found a way to make it happen. Pardon me? Hour and a half. But I'm sure they were happy that they got their marijuana out of their out of their armored truck. So it was a bunch of marijuana in the truck or ganja or wacky tobacco, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so they were having a conversation about a hole in the door somewhere or an access hole, but in this case, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So they were saying it had bulletproof windows, no trap door, no sliding door. There's only one way to do it. Cut off the, sh cut off the bolts. And you got the job done. He got paid. Took him an hour and a half. He's probably sweating bullets, but he got it done. <laughs> go ahead, Aaron. I'm going to go over here and see if we can hear you. Maybe you should come on up. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Uh, when you're thinking about drilling a medical, oh, OK. Well, you've done it. What's it? You've done it? Well, yeah. Good. Um, when you're thinking about drilling a medical, if you have the ability to use a, uh, a tile bit on your Dremel, those can make quick work, quicker work of a, a medical cylinder. Uh, you might have to take the, the, the front of the front face plate off uh, with like a grinder or your drill, you know, cut off wheel from your Dremel. But then the, uh, uh, the tile bit on the Dremel will, will make quick work of, the, of that and you can get a turn that way. If you have to do it in the future. Also, you can get a solid carbide burr I got one from McMaster Car, and it works really well. Like if you break a drill bit off or something, it's carbide and it's very sharp. Great. So now you're getting the medical armor truck. So I, I just wanted to have, make a few acknowledgments. I wanted to commend Don Hubel, who won the nomination for the Election of North Central Director of the Associated Locksmiths of America. Let's give John a hand. 
think John, you've been around for at least what 30 years in the industry, 40 years, is coming 40 years or 30 years. I, I lose count. 48 years. So that's a lot of dedication. I was there when they gave the Lifetime Achievement Award at Allure. So it's well deserved. And uh, I, I commend you. Also, Wayne Winton won the election for a Southeast director, I believe. Southwest director. So Wayne, are you online? <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, he, he sent me a text that he's, he's technically on vacation. So I know his wife does not want him to answer the phone. I'm sure, I'm sure of that. So yeah, so those are two things I wanted to just acknowledge and, and let you know that we, we've got some good members and they're doing great things. So a couple of things I want to also do. So the Aloha Convention, for those that don't know, is, you can show that there, you want to show that. So i the sixth in Orlando, Florida, at Hilton, Orlando. I've been to at least four conventions, and every time I went, I've never been disappointed by the hotel. The hotels are beautiful. A little costly, but beautiful. <laughs> yes, I think I only have a couple of them, so those who don't have them, but you can go online to Aloha's website and get the information about the convention, and it's just a lot of really good classes in there, so you can take a look at that. Um, a lot of state classes, a lot of uh, automotive classes, a lot of everything. Also, the LSA reporter, Ray Sinai wrote a really good article. He would have been here today, but he's on vacation also. We talked about a situation where it was a gas station owner in, in the city of Detroit where there was a person that was trying to steal some items from it. $4, I think it was three or $4. And so what ended up happening, for those who didn't read the article, the owner locked the door with three other people in there. It was a total of four people locked in a gas station that the owner locked. And the owner was behind a bulletproof glass. In other words, the owner was protected, but there was people in the store. So the guy who was attempting to steal the item got belligerent and said, I'm going to shoot everybody in here if you don't let me out. And I believe one person did fatally die. And the other two are probably in critical condition. I'm not sure exactly what happened to the other two, but I, I, he, he wrote the article not to say this only happens in Detroit. It happens a lot of places, but he wrote it to say, if you were a locksmith, would you have installed that type of lock on that particular business establishment? Because what we all have to remember is that when we install things like that, I don't know if you know about lawyers, but lawyers sue everybody. They sue the person that installed it, they sue the person that manufactured it. They sue the person that actually pulled the trigger or, or pushed the button. So I say that to say, not all money is good money. <laughs> Sometimes people ask you to do things that are not only against the local establishment, it's against city ordinances, it's a violation. And even though the owner's trying to keep his stuff, is it really worth it? And I think it was a very well-written article. So if you get a chance, it's in the LSA Reporter. He wrote about that. Yes. You want to add, if I can add one thing. Yeah. Just um, again, those uh, who want to get more information on the convention you just mentioned for Aloha, they can go to our website, the homepage, the brochure is there, all yes. 30 or 40 pages with descriptions of everything. So just click on our homepage, it's right there. Very good point. It was actually 28 pages, but okay. it was pretty close to 30. <laughs> so just, just speaking to this uh, that, uh, that, he, that Kelvin brought up about the, uh, the gas station, it's, it, 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 this is a pretty, let's call it ghetto gas station. And uh, the, the fact of the matter is it was an employee who's, who's who's protected behind the bulletproof glass, putting the people, the, cu the other customers at risk by locking the front door with a lock or whatever it was, not al allowing escape. And you know, the customer went nuts and shot me. Just so you know, it's not limited to the ghetto. I, there's a, there's a, a relatively new PNC bank near me yeah. that uh, if you want to get in or get out, you actually go through a series of mag locked doors that can freeze you at that point in or out. There's actually a set to go in and a set to go out. 
and you have to step in, wait for this door to close, and then the next door will let you uh, in if they let you. So it's yeah. depending on uh, local uh, life safety codes and what's allowed by by the city and what's allowed by loss prevention. All that it's that point. It's in Detroit, but it's not a ghetto van. You know, it's, about it's really when, when when you're locksmith and you walk, you step. Wow, what happens if uh, the crash happens? And, you, and that's that's something you have to think about. Every not every dollar is a good dollar. You are absolutely right, Kelly. Because if we if we if we take everything that comes to our way, we're going to get our be selected. Don't don't go after every dollar. Think about it. Not at all. Not, yeah. Sometimes you're going to grab a dollar that doesn't make your money or your time. Another thing I want to mention about with the banks, a lot of times you walk in some of these banks, they won't allow you to carry a gun or any kind of metal. Even with the schools, school systems are like that too. They have these metal detectors. So you can walk into these places and they won't even allow you in if you have any kind of metal or gun or anything like that. So there's a lot of places I think they're kind of borderline illegal, doing stuff illegal, but they're they're getting away with it until you know, lawyers come in and start suing everybody. So it's just something to think about and remember. Also, I also wrote an article, just jumping from another subject, I wrote an article about evictions and abandoned property. And what I did, I did some research and found out that the eviction laws throughout the United States differ from city to city, state to state. So I always tell people, if you're dealing with evictions, where someone calls you and say, hey, I've got an eviction, we're gonna put this person out, the sheriff shows up, the bailiff shows up, the dumpster's there. Always make sure you look at the paperwork. That's number one. And also, I, if you look at our newsletter, there's a database, it's called lsc.gov. And you can look at it on our, on our, our uh, reporter. And you can go there, you can put in your state and it'll tell you what the eviction laws say. And I'm sure those that are into real estate and that kind of thing, there's certain things that you can and cannot do when it comes to evicting people. You have to follow the law. And I always tell people that a lot of these guys are inf investors from out of town. They come in, they buy up these whole blocks and they do a lot of illegal stuff and they call you and they keep calling you until you answer or you say, no, I'm not gonna do that because that's illegal. That, that doesn't happen here, maybe in your state, but not in this state. So it's just something to be aware about. I just wanted to mention that. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Those that are online, maybe brought up a lot of issues, or some someone out here. Do work for one property manager comp management company, and they use the term legal entry. Uh, the documentation will always say legal entry. Um, I, 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 at first, I wondered what that meant, why they were so diligent and adamant about saying that, but that's exactly why. Well, then, is that they, um, there are rules to follow, and they want to make it very, very clear that we're, they're just not booting somebody. They are actually following the procedure for rental property. And another thing, changing the subject beforehand, you know, I'm a stickler for words, what they mean, you use them after. What is the term you use? You go through a door, and you can't go through the second door until the first door is closed. Well, technically, it would be an, an ACV. ACV. That's a access, new one on me. What? Access control vestibule. The list council doesn't call it that at all. No. I've never heard that term. That's what our customers call it instead of calling it a man trap because, you know. Well, there's also a man trap and a Sally. Um, Sally trap or like a set. Well, a Sally port is at a jail. Okay, Sally, correct. Where the vehicle pulls into a garage and that's uh, sectioned off, you can't escape from it. Is that the Sally port? Yeah, but uh, most of those I think are. It's just a lock. The 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 man traps. You know, we have banks that have them too, and they'll if they close a location, they take that whole. Those are they're extremely expensive. They take the whole thing out of the one place, put an aluminum storefront back in and put that in, in a, another branch. And yeah, they, they don't mess around in, in some of those locations. 
Well, I, I was just simply getting, um, we as professionals ought to use professional language. And I know Bill is probably nodding at this point too. Why did my phone keep going off? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to you if you want to. You probably got stammered call. Anyway, we use the right terms for the right purposes and the list council is a little active in making sure that they're accurate. So that's, that was my point. I've used words as professionals that apply and eventually the public will catch on the more we use them. I got your microphone again. Sorry. No problem. So the main thing, and I'll repeat the word, Wayne Winton, cover your assets. Make sure you're covered. Document, document, document. I was um, at ID and Hardware Sales the other day, and I had a conversation with a guy. His name was Michael Walbrig. He owns Maximus Lock and Key. And he came in with a body camera. And honestly, I thought he was a police officer. <laughs> And he says what he does, and I'm not saying you guys should do this, but I'm just saying this is what some people are doing. So he says every job he goes to, he turns on his body camera and he records the whole transaction. He does a lot of commercial work. He says what happens with commercial sometimes, nobody's there. And sometimes the customers say, you messed up my lock or you did this. And he just videotapes the whole transaction. He goes up there, if he has to change some cylinders, he'll change them, he'll swap them out. He'll make sure everything's working and he has a recording of it. So it's something you might want to consider. Some people may get very intimidated by it. So you have to just know your customer. But, um, and the other thing he said, he said, um, aren't you Kelvin Heath? I said, yeah. So I'm thinking, what is this, what, how does this guy know me? I've never met him before. He says, I heard you and Wayne went on the podcast. I said, oh, so it's getting around there. So it was, it was interesting that sometimes when you do these podcasts, and John, I think you reminded me of it. You said you have to be very careful of what you say because it's recorded forever somewhere on the cloud somewhere. So, yeah, so he was very interested in the LSA. I did invite him here and told him that um, what we do and uh, uh, told him about the website and everything. Now, I noticed there are some items here in the back. Maybe someone can explain this to me, what's going on here. Because we, we, we're having a swap meet today for those who don't know that are online. And I don't know if you can ship some of this stuff or, Maybe someone can explain to me what we have. So we have a number of key machines here, a number of cold machines, a number of things here. So is this your stuff, Marty, most of it? Okay, come on up here, explain what you have and what you're trying to accomplish. So, so this again is Marty and he's talking about what he has to offer. Okay, say it slow. So he has a, 57 HS, which is, for those that don't know. Fifty-seven HS mach machine, which is a sidewinder mach machine. And how much are you selling that for? If I if you don't mind me asking. Are you selling that? Okay. So tell us what. Tell us what you're selling it for. So the people online, maybe they might. They, okay, so he said, make them an offer. So what else do you have? So, so far we've got the 57 HS, which is a sidewinder machine, correct? Okay, what else do you have, Marty? <laughs> they're trying to bring this stuff up to the camera guys so we have a little swap meet going on so they're showing what we have so far we have a 57 hs which is a sidewinder machine that marty from american lock and key is selling he's going to bring it up he's doing a show and tell <laughs> We need like an auctioneer person, you know. <laughs> so do you guys see it? It looks brand new. I don't see a scratch on it. He hasn't dropped it yet either. That's so a framing. It's a, <laughs> so it's a Sidewinder 2 with all the bits, guys. Mercedes, BMW, Chrysler, Ford, GM. Okay. Again, that's Mercedes, 
BMW, Chrysler, Ford, and GM. This is an originator. And it's uh, made by Freeman. Yeah. Okay. It's an originator. So if the customer lost their keys and you got the key code, you can cut it. So we're looking for best offer, guys. What else do you have, Marty? Oh, there's more. <laughs> and while he's getting that, I also wanted to let you guys know how many are familiar with DTEX? Everybody know about DTEX? Well, they actually have training, and I believe it's free. So if you go under dtex.com and look under upcoming training, they have a couple of them coming up. So June 22nd, they have a Southern Lock trade show, and they're going to be there. A low, of course, is August the 10th. They're going to be there doing some training. So DTEX, if you're looking to do any kind of commercial hardware training with DTEX, go online. They have some free training. You can sign up. You can subscribe online, that kind of thing. So, okay, so Marty's back. What do you have, Marty? What, what's next? <laughs> so, so you've got a 57 HS. 57 HS. 057HS. So what laser cut duplicator? So it's a laser cut duplicator. So is it is it a is it an automatic machine or how does it work? Is it manual? How does it work? You push a button, it goes by itself, or you have to you put the original key on one side, you put the key you're going to cut on this side here, there's the cutter. Okay. And you just move the dial. Yeah, you move this. Okay. So it's pretty much a manual machine then. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's yes. an automatic. Yeah, manual, yeah, manual, yeah. It's a manual machine. Okay. So, so best off on that. So this is a uh, duplicator for high security keys, pretty much, would you yeah. say? Okay. So that's an O57H. All right, you have something else, HS, high security. So that's, those are flat high security keys, sidewinder. So he has one for a sidewinder high security. He has four. Okay, so he has more. I also want to mention that the locksmith yeah. ledger, I don't know if you guys could see that. Locksmith ledger is still in business, guys. They have magazines that come out every month. I think this one's focusing on school security. So anybody's looking for, Income, more markets, the schools need help. So, Locksmith Ledger, all you got to do is sign up. It talks about school security, says classroom lock key upgrades, a lot of stuff, cylindrical mortgage lock servicing tips, growth for more mortgage mobile credentials, all that kind of stuff. Okay, Marty, what else do you have? So, we got three machines. So, what do you got here? These are the cutters for the, the first key machine that I showed you. Okay. So, he has cutters. 57 HS Sidewinder machine, correct? For the, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Honda, Ford, GM, Chrysler. Okay. And then I got the key machine here. Okay, so he's got an antique here. Is this a fully belt? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a manual key duplicating machine. Yeah. Yeah. It's an antique. Make me an offer. All right. So he's willing to ship it. You might have to pay for shipping costs, but he's willing to ship it. All right. What else do you have? You have more? Oh, he's got a whole bunch of stuff. Well, we're going to keep it rolling. So, I'll, yes. I've got a Freeman original. I've got a HPC 1200. Uh, with uh, four cutting wheels. I've got a Bravo 2 and I've got a Bravo 3. Everything cuts accurately. Okay. And are you have a set price you want for it or? No. Uh, 600 for the Freeman. Okay. 900 for the, uh, for the uh, Bravo 3, I'd like 1,000. For the Bravo 2, I'd like 700. Okay, sounds like really good deal. So that you could double that now, isn't it? The the Bravo three I checked with IDN and uh, our cost was twenty four hundred. Okay. The, now this is this, this is not an easy job. One, this is yes. I'll take uh, seven. Hey, we got a deal already. Let's make a deal. <laughs> He's interested in it. He's, we, we, I think we got a buyer for one of the machines. He's interested in it, but he said he wants to make, make sure he puts it up and it works. <laughs> All right, Marty, what do we have here? Oh, now this looks like a Foley Bell saw. 
I remember this machine. Yes, I remember this machine where you have to mail in the, the instructions. Yeah, and they mailed them back to you. Yep, this is original Foley Bell. It actually works. Okay. Wow, he, he went way back. That goes back to the 70s. <laughs> All right, so what else do you have back there? So this is the framing book. Framing, dual code machine, key cutting, depth. Okay. If, if somebody here can use it, you can have it, if you can use it. Okay. What else do you have here? Uh, space and depths. It, it's an older book. It's it's, uh, it's obsolete. But, you know, I mean, if you can use it or if you just want to keep it and, and uh, yeah. if you got a collection going on, you can have it. Or if you're somewhere where you can't get internet connection, like in the boonies somewhere, and you lose power, you got backup. Or old, old, old. <laughs> Anything else you got back there? Okay. Um, who else? Aaron, you got more stuff back there? Okay. So Aaron brought four machines, guys. We got about nine machines here that are in great condition. If you guys are interested in it, let us know. Yeah, they, they don't want to take them home. So, I mean, they'll, they'll ship them. So make it make a deal. All right, what else do we have here? So we got a bunch of conventions coming up also. Of course, we've got a lower convention coming up. There's a, yes, there's an auto, uh, Aloha has an auto division now. And also UHS has a auto seminar coming. If you go on to uhs.com, I believe it is, they have an auto seminar for a whole week dealing with high security, Mercedes, BMWs, all the domestic stuff. It's in Hollywood, Florida. So you may want to check out that because always new stuff coming out. So you guys may want to check out that, kind of see what else is coming up here. What else is coming up? I already mentioned DTEX. Um, they got a bunch of stuff here. Okay, there's a IML Security Expo in Kansas City, Missouri, Inner Mountain. Anybody want to talk about that? Anybody ever been to that one? Anybody online been to the IM, IML Security Expo? Okay. Okay. So I'm looking at some of the upcoming DTEX training. So there's one in Kansas City coming up. And they don't have the dates on all of these, but... If you go online under DTEX, they'll show all this or either to our, our website, lsamichigan.org. Also, there's a dual security products in September, a value service exit devices, a Southern Lock trade show. So it's a lot of conventions coming up. Yeah. Okay. He says, this is a chat from Wayne. If you go to the chat, it says, I'm afraid they will interfere with each other running two mics. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm teaching door servicing and electronic access at UHS this week too. Okay, so Wayne will be teaching an access control, I'm sorry, a electronic access control class. All right, great. So Harvey, I see you online. You got something for us? Nothing special, just that I'm still selling software. Okay, that's a good thing. Anybody else want to share anything? Yeah, I can give a quick report from Ohio. We had a class last month. Uh, they did an intertech uh, certification on coring fire doors, and Tom was gracious enough to let Polo members attend to audit the class for free and to get his food. Uh, we had a swap meet plan, but the only person who brought anything was Tom. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of members that weren't able to make it for various reasons, uh, but we have our, our regular meeting back in Ohio uh, this Sunday, and uh, they're doing a lock picking class. Russell Davies, who also runs Tag 5 Industries, uh, him and Bob Scott are teaching a, a seminar uh, before the meeting, and uh, just personally just busy in the shop there's always stuff going on uh ran into a very poorly in my opinion bill you'll appreciate this is a factory system from schlage top master key 
which of course is multiple sections. The first three cuts were nine, six, five, and they couldn't figure out why their control key looked like an S and didn't work very well. Well, the blank is thin and your first cut is a nine. And yeah, I mean, this was a factory printout from like 1995 for a pretty big building downtown. And they're using, you know, keys that don't hold up very well. I was able to get it to work. I mean, the control key only has to work once. It's Schlage large format. I see, so you just have to be able to get the cores in. The master keys work better, but it, you know, not a very good design to have deep cuts right at the bow. And I learned, that's one of the many things I learned in your classes that you don't want to do that. You know, the older Schlage large format, the little control button, you used to be able to push it down, put the core in, and that was great in construction situations. Yeah. You did not need a control key, but when they came up with Primus, they changed it so you cannot yeah. do that anymore. It's funny you say that because we had a uh, one of the schools. This was a newer one. The guy, the custodian, accidentally put a zero bitted four in. You know, somehow he pushed it and he was able to get it in the padlock. And we had to modify because it it's a, a D one thirty five keyway. Okay. One bitted, and we had to modify a blank, and we were able to get the core out. But <laughs> we messed with it for probably a month before we, and you have to push pretty hard to get those in. And it was like right. I said, this was a a brand new core. He picked up the wrong one or whatever, right. and and he got it. I don't know if there was a hammer involved, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. The, the these deep the deep cut in the bow is always generally oh, yeah. an idea. And and the reason, well, one of the reasons they changed that whole idea is that. People could get access to the back of a core by drilling right. or whatever and push that and take it out. So they wanted to yeah. change that for security reasons. Oh, yeah, that that certainly makes sense. But yeah, just uh, having these, you know, keys yeah. that are just guaranteed to break. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Great news, you know, you always learn something. Hey, I, I don't know if you got anybody familiar with Steve Young, you know, Steve Young from Pensacola, Florida, anybody here? Mm -hmm. So Steve Young, he wrote a quick reference automotive manual. Show it here. It came out in 2017 through Lockmasters. And I think it's a very good book. I don't know if it's even still available through Lockmasters, but I had a call today and it was a 2009 Corvette. Now, I don't know if you guys know about the Corvette, but it has a little for lack of a better word, a little box in the back that you have to access in order to open this car. And I talked to Steve about it and Steve, he's always very cordial. He was actually on his way to a doctor's appointment. So pray for him. He's having a lot of respiratory problems, but I remember he was here at uh, LSA for a couple of meetings we had in Kalamazoo back in the day when Bill Reed was and all those guys were with him. So he's doing very well right now, but he talked about the Corvette. I'm trying to see if I can find it in this book. It's, it was a very good information because he said, if you have to take this thing apart, you better charge accordingly because it is not a fun car to try to deal with. But the reason why I'm mentioning this is because sometimes we come across these cars and we assume it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a standard type of situation. But let me see if I can find it here. Yes, yes. So yeah. So what he mentioned was that many times if you can't make a key, you got to take this lock apart. And in order to take it apart, you got to take the the back lights off. And, and I said, oh, well. <laughs> and so he basically recommended Lishi as a good tool to make a key for that back hatch. So in the back bumper, there's a little access hole. Once you pull that out, you have to make a key for that in order to open the car. And then from that point, there's no other keys on the car. So I always say, you know, information is powerful. Another book that I would recommend, and I don't do a lot of automotive. I'm, I'm, I, I did it years ago, but I'm just getting back into it. And I'm finding a lot of stuff This, you almost got to be auto mechanic because you can quote a customer price and all of a sudden it's totally different because the, the motherboard is messed up or whatever. And then they get sticker shock. Because it's not, and, and I hate to say it, but customers lie to you a lot of times. <laughs> they don't tell you the whole truth. 
the car may have been in Florida in a swamp somewhere and they're bringing it back. And, you know, you ask them, is, is, is the car battery up? Yes, yeah, up. You get there, the battery's dead. So I say that. And Jimmy, you could probably talk a little bit more about automotive. Is, you do a lot of automotive? Okay, Jimmy, come on up, Jimmy. You could talk about this more now. You're more educated than I am. So talk about some crazy stuff that happens in automotive. Yeah, a lot of it. I get a 1948 Lincoln Continental the other day. Um, which I did not know. I got a lesson from Matt Trupiano. The locks were uh, made by Herd, and oh, he's still around. Yes, he just got a patent on a, a lock that he designed. It's called the Paradox. You can pick it, but you can't pick it. When you pick it, you put it into a position where it only turns so far, and you have no choice but to go back to straight up and down. But anyhow, he's doing really well. For an 84 year old guy, he still goes out and does service calls. I called him up and uh, told him I was having trouble picking the lock. I and mean, I was trying to, I had the face cap off the 48 Lincoln and uh, I was trying to pick the lock. I figured maybe I could pick it to a position where it would come out. I got this cap off of it and I called him and he explained to me that Edsel Ford designed the car and that uh, the Ford family made the Herd family very, very wealthy by buying their locks. And all I had to do is use an Allen wrench and take a loosen a set screw and pull the cylinder right out of the door. Key code was right on it. Luckily for me, luckily for me, I had one original herd blank in stock in my store. And I cut the key and the guy was very happy. Um, but yeah, uh, to, to what you were saying, um, my best advice as far as automotive is always go prepared, over prepared. A customer will tell you, I got a brand new battery. You get there. You can look on a battery. It's got a sticker on it. it. tells you when it was built, what year it was sold, everything. Half the time, they tell you they bought it six months ago and it's four years old. So bring a booster box. Bring extra long cables. Spend the extra money. Get the big cables. Make sure they'll run all the way up the driveway. Um, and uh, don't be afraid to call another buddy and ask. That's Because you never know. And I'm, I'm always available. If anybody wants my cell phone number, if you're struggling with a vehicle, I've done almost all of them. Um, I stay away from the BMWs and the Benzes because I'm just so busy doing the American stuff. It's um, We can get key codes as long as your client has proper paperwork, either a title or a registration and a valid ID. Um, if nothing's, if the ID is not valid, we can't help them. It's got to be up to date. Um, we use, we use uh, NASDAQ. We purchase the key codes. It, some people think we're crazy for purchasing key codes, but what, if you're computer savvy and you can get on the computer, you can have a key code in less than five minutes, put the key in the machine, cut it, you're on your way to the customer's house, you get there. Nine times out of 10, it works. But, but every once in a while, you run into a car, it's got a ignition that's been changed or an ignition that's a common problem. You know, the, the GM 10 cuts, sometimes the, especially the Z keyway, the, the side lock and bar, you know, the, the key, the tip of the key wears out, which makes the key shorter. The, the tumblers wear out and the old key will work the ignition, but a brand new fresh key won't. So um, I do know how to pick 10 cut side locking bar ignitions. If anybody ever would like to learn how to do it, I'll be happy to show you how to do it. Yeah, I'm, when they first came out, I don't know if anybody remembers Harold Maynard from Quick, Quick Lock. Um, he became, he was also a Detroit firefighter. He became uh, an adjuster for the insurance companies and he was doing stolen car recovery stuff. And at the time I was a young guy, I was working at Campus Collision. I knew him a little bit about locks. I would hang out at Fred's before I got my job there. And he told me, this is, this is the inside job. You can't manipulate these locks. And I said, you get over there on the passenger seat and I'm gonna show you how and within less than 60 seconds, you can pop the face cap off the lock you take one of your tension wrenches and put a little bend in it, stick it in the side locking bar, rake it. You can feel it thing pop in. You just turn it on with a screwdriver. Done, gone, bye. <laughs> That's back when they, before you had the chip key, they had that uh, pass lock one or pass lock two where there's a magnet on the lock. When you bring, bring the magnet up to the wires, you're gone. A lot of guys would just pop the, when they were stealing them, they were popping the face caps off and putting a pair of vice grips on and rocking it back and forth until they could get it to snap past and as long as they didn't break the face cap off, which I did a lot of repairs where they were trying and they broke the face of the lock off, they couldn't get it to turn. But then they got wiser. 
They started buying punches, sticking the punch in the side lock and bar, pounding it in and pulling the, pulling the punch out and starting it with a screwdriver. Seen it all. Locksmith and in downtown Detroit. So I'd be happy to go over some things with anybody that wants to learn about some automotive stuff all the way. The oldest car I've done is a 32 Ford, and the newest one I've done is all the way up till now. So, so how do you price those things? Because um, stuff is, I know price is always a specific issue, but how do you price something that's like obsolete, like, you know, like thirty-two? Yeah, like say for example. Yeah, two questions. Then I then I think it's fine. Oh, um, so how do you price the vehicles? Yeah. Um, over the years, I've, with my basic automotive experience, is, you know, I have a lot of experience in it, so it's easy for me, but it was a struggle in the beginning. To how you go out there, you tell somebody something, and you're out there, and you're like, oh man, this is a lot more than I expected. But with my automotive background, I was a mechanic before I became a locksmith. Um, it made it, I had a, a little bit of an advantage. I knew what I was up against. So if you can do your research, um, call another uh, locksmith that knows, you know, it's it, never be afraid to tell the customer, I'll be, I'll get right back to you. Let me get your name and phone number. I'll get right back in. If you're not sure, call me, call any, any of your other guys and say, Hey, what am I up against? Um, and a lot of times I can tell you what you're going to be up against, whether it's going to be tough or whether it's going to be hard. Um, like for example, uh, a pin tumbler, five, five pin Ford, like from the, uh, like the nineties. So they're a pain to drill because they put a drill pr proof plate in the darn things. So what I do, if I can't pick them, which I usually can, I have a special set of picks for picking them, get them turned on, hit the retainer. Sometimes you got to pull the wheel to hit the retainer. Um, instead of trying to drill the shear line, I go right down the keyway with a nice big bit, take a plastic screwdriver handle and whack the steering column. All the pins come flying out and turn it with a screwdriver and hit the retainer. And and then, the, you know, the you have like a lot of uh, the Saturns when they were using General Motors 10 cuts there uh yeah you can uh we were doing a lot of like you know you get to a situation where you make a key by by code ignition's already been changed somebody put it on whatever key they wanted to put it on they're a little difficult to get out even when you have them i've had i've had some saturns where even though i've already manipulated the side lock and bar they just don't want to turn because the tip of the ignition is is also working the steering wheel lock. So getting them to turn that first time, you really got to put some effort into it. And some of the Saturn, um, re uh, the retainers are very hard to to get to. There's one where you go from underneath and it's your, your, your area of being able to hit it is very, very slim and trying to get it out. And like, if you know you got it, I made a, a tool and Troop top told me I should have had it patented a long time ago. I ended up seeing it in a locksmith book years later. I took a, a dent puller and I welded a pair of vice grips on the end of it. And when I need to, I just run a screw into something and clamp it on and a little bit of extra oomph to get the thing out. So, uh, yeah, there's there's so many different aspects to the automotive thing. A lot of guys get discouraged because they just can't keep up with it all. Like they're, they're not they're not all eight cut fours that'll just pop right out, you know. But Thank you. yeah, my pleasure. Be happy to help anybody out if they ever have a question. I'll leave some cards and uh, Great. picking my brain is something I'm always open to. Thank you. Thank you so yep. much. So you just heard about 25 years experience is 30 years experience. 27 years experience work with automotive. So he had a mechanical background as far as being a mechanic. So that helped out a lot. So. Anybody wants to have any automotive questions? Jimmy, he'll be here for us. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah.
<laughs> so what he was saying, he, he became a locksmith because he got cut, tired of getting his hands greasy and dirty and he wanted a cleaner job. So yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. I know I, mine started with Ace Hardware and I, I was just fascinated with the guy that bring, he used to bring in a quick set locks, we rekey him and they take him back home. That was back in the day. But um, Rich, you have some things you want to sell also. You want to come up and tell us what you have? So we got a lot of stuff, guys. For, for those that are on the Zoom meetings, um, we got a lot of, lot of machines, a lot of uh, good items that's for sale and for trade. And so Rich, he's going to bring up his show and tell. He's, he brought a cart here. So I know he's got all kinds of stuff. Here's the mic, here's the mic. Oh, it on. That's camera. So my shop, maybe somebody here. This is, uh, I don't know if anybody recognizes this or what this is. I have no idea. Do you know what this is? I don't know. No, it cuts keys. It's like, uh, it reminds me of the leashy cutters. Yeah. So I own Epstein's. They've been around over a hundred years. Oh yeah, you do. Oh, and I, nice and I, they're rich. <laughs> so I just grabbed some stuff from the shop. I was like, this is some unique stuff that, you know, I love, huh? I don't know what it's for. I think it is Schlage wafer cutter. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Schlage wafer punch. Yeah. Wow. So now we know. Now we know what it is. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of this guy's shop? Epstein's, which is where? Correct. Yeah, East Point, Michigan. Okay. 1917. And I got this guy. It's an old Chrysler. It's like an easy reader. It's got a little. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So there's a little pin on the top here that pushes in, and that tells you the depth of it right there. Never used it. I haven't had it. 17, 2017. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Picked it up right into hundreds of years. Yeah. <laughs> so I got uh I got some old gate locks. That's one you need one. Oh, that old gate lock. Yep. That looks great. Yep. Brought some old mortise locks. Any padlocks? Yeah, I got some padlocks here. I got some old Yales that I brought. I have, and I have more in the box. I have brand new Rustlins that the pins haven't even been uh, punched in yet. Oh, some original links. Wow. I don't know. 70? Is this 3D 70 on it? Well, 3D would be a D3 keyway. I got an old bird. I don't have a key for it. Somebody might just want an old herd. I got an old Elmont. What's that? I don't. Uh... Oh, is that the? Um... That's a magnetic one from Capital Industries, I think. I'm audio from over there. I can't hear anything you're saying. I lost the audio as well. Okay, then it's not just me. A bunch of arrow key knob builders. If anybody needs any, no more slot. I don't use them. I got a box of them. Oh, that's a real box. Oh, that's a real box. 
I got all kinds of boxes and stuff like that laying around. Can you, guys you, guys are... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Apparently, we just learned old mailbox boxes. Uh, oh, yeah. Got a whole box of them. That's about it. I just grabbed something real quick for before I ran over here. If you guys are interested in anything, let me know. Well, I have these, uh, they're kind of like the uh, those self changing uh, screwdrivers. They pull it out and twist it and push it back up. I had a couple of those. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of them. So I was like, maybe somebody here will want them. So, yep. If anybody wants anything, let me know. Yeah, everybody likes the cart, though. I think I got it from Amazon. Are you selling the cart? I'm not selling the cart, but Amazon <laughs> sold the cart. I think everybody likes the cart more than like the stuff that's on there. <laughs> oh. It's always good to have a cart. Yeah, I, I wanted to tell you, Jimmy, a story about True Piano. So I was at a job, I was on a job, and there was a slag. I thought it was an IC core slag, but it had some sort of spring on it. Never seen it before. And I was able to pick it, and Trupiano was like, you picked a six-pin slag? I said, yeah. And it was some kind of weird cut, and I did it like three times, and he was so impressed. He said, man, bring that lock over my house. I went all the way to his house. I think he's on the east side somewhere. Yeah. And he saw me, he said, I want to see you pick it. So I picked it, and he was really impressed. We kind of hit it off from there, but he's a very impressive guy, Trupiano. Yeah. yeah, he's from Fred's key shop. Yeah. 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 One thing I think we we might want to do, guys like Trooper who's in his eighties, just have an interview with them. Just physically, a lot of times they're not going to write down everything, but we can just have an interview where we archive it, and he could talk about stuff that he went through and stuff yeah. that that he knows because. You know, they always say the richest place in the world is the grave because people die, especially us lots of, we die with all these secrets. So I think that would be something good to. Yeah, at some point. I can't even tell you how many times I've been on a job or working on some old block I've never seen before. Wow. Um, and I tell like, he will only understand you if you Yes. If you, can, if you can relate to him what you're doing in locker room terminology, the guy is a genius. He can tell you what to do over the phone. Yes. I was looking for uh, the first time I ran across, I can't remember what brand it is. I want to say Sergeant. So, like, where it's got the little tiny pinhole in the side of the knob where you go in and hit the retainer. Okay. It's just, I'm on the job and I'm like, I can't find a retainer anywhere. And he said, Oh, is there a little tiny pinhole? Go get yourself a paper clip. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're just talking about experiences. Your locks business helps out through a lot of jobs. Um, Aaron, you had your hand up back there. You want to, I saw your, your hand up. Back. I want to share anything. I know we we're closing a little bit earlier, but anybody else want to share anything online or here? So our last meeting, whatever you got, you might want to say it now. <laughs> Without going through the whole scenario of the story, I went to a job that the locksmith before me had drilled out the cylinder. And I get to the site and I'm thinking, why did he drill the cylinder out? When all he had to do was stick his car opening tool between the double doors, twist it, and pull on the exit device. Silly things that people don't do, and I guess he's calling himself a locksmith, and he is listed, but doesn't belong to any associations. But uh, food for thought, when you do things, look at the whole picture, not just what you think you're supposed to have to do. It doesn't always require a lot of work to get, accomplish the goal. It's not always about pushing people about taking care of your customer and doing things right the right way. Taking care of your customer, doing it the right way. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we get caught up in the moment or we've been stressed out of had six or seven jobs, right in our face. Sometimes somebody else is 
Your mic is cutting out. I can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you? Yes. What I was talking about is that sometimes we're on the job, but we don't see the obvious. And sometimes the new guy or the new girl or the new gal or the new man, new boy, whoever it is, they may see something we don't see. And sometimes they can point out things that we may not may not see. So it's always good to sometimes step back from a job or even when someone is calling you to kind of step back, I'll, I'll call you back. Because sometimes we're, we're, we're so quick to give them an answer, we're so quick to the job that we don't really realize they're the easy way of doing this job. I know I have two sons and sometimes they say things, I'm like, okay, I, I should have thought about that. You know, because they, they, they have a different way of looking at things sometimes. So I always say that it's, it's always best sometimes when you're on a job that seems difficult, make that phone call, step back for a minute, go eat a lunch, come back, D new perspectives. Because sometimes when you're hungry, when you're hangry, you know, you're angry with customers sometimes. Sometimes you get snappy with customers. But go ahead, Eric. That's right. That's right. I'm fat for a reason. I, uh, a number of years ago, I, I learned, decided, uh, horrible thing I, I went through. I, uh, I, was, I, I was on a really busy day. It was about 2 o'clock. I was just go, go, going. I hadn't eaten. And I was going to do a rekey at a nail salon. And I was like, okay, I'll do the rekey, get that done. There's a McDonald's right across the street. As soon as the rekey's done, I'm going to go to McDonald's, solve this problem. So I, I take the locks off. I got it in a, you know, a little nook, and I'm doing the job. And I, all I remember about one lock, the front door lock, was that it was a lock I had never done before. I, I, I'd never taken this particular hardware apart before. But in order to get the cylinder out, I needed to do that. So I took it apart, got it out, re put it back together. And it worked backwards. Okay, I must mess that up. So take, take it back apart, put it back together, and it won't work. Okay, I messed that up. So I just take it apart. Four five minutes later, this thing is not working. I can't get this thing to work. I slap the thing down on the counter, get up, go tell the manager, I will be back in 10 minutes. I'm going across the street at McDonald's. I'm going to get myself a chicken and a Coke, and I'll be back. That's exactly what I did. I walked across the street. I ate a McChicken at the counter and the Coke. The machine was right there. I didn't even move. And then as I'm mowing this thing down, I order another McChicken. I get that. I sit down for five minutes. So I get you know, a little food and drink in my stomach. Okay, I calm down sufficiently. I go back across the street. In 10 minutes, the job is complete. I wasted an hour of my day because I didn't eat. Because I was stupid. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't see the obvious solution. I don't just get angry. I get stupid. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I can't explain it any better than that. It's just, it was, the, the solution is right there in my, in my front of me like this. And I can't see it because my, I'm only seeing red from hunger. So we got to take care of each other. We got to take care of ourselves. And feel free to call the people association around. Oh, no, you're my competitors. Okay, fine. There's plenty of work to go around. We, uh, we need to take care of each other. If there's something you need from me, if there's, uh, some wisdom I can impart. Call me. Let me know. I'll write something by my brain. Maybe I'll know something you don't. Maybe you'll know something I don't. But yeah, we need to we need to stick together, take care of each other. We are not the scammers. So thank you so much. See, last month Aaron and, and um John, they were super tired. They didn't say anything. Now they got a lot to say. <laughs> Which is a good thing. You know, I just want to leave you guys with a with a couple of notes uh, I, I went to one of ed woods auto classes and we all know most of you know ed woods he's like the automotive guru for law and he said a few things about automotive and i'm just going to read something so I, I, I take notes everywhere i go 
So the easy reader works good on back spare tire locks or bumper locks on GM 10 cut locks. So he said the easy reader works really good on those. In dash locks on GM cars are easy to damage, especially the 2004 to 2010. Be careful with the antenna rings. Here's another thing he said, the wires do break on the in dash bats ignitions. Also, he said, Honda ignitions are horrible to work with. You could probably relate to some of this. The other... Yes, he said, Ford Focus ignitions are also bad and will fail on you. I, I don't know. <laughs> so those are some of the, and this was, this was in 2020, I wrote it down, 9 when I was at a, I think, if, I don't know if it was a low or somewhere, but I, he just left a few words of wisdom there. Um, the last, yes. Or if you have these lighted door locks, don't impress them, or if you are, be very careful. There's the plastic in there. I remember the five, five ten. Four door locks. The Lincolns had, yeah, the Lincoln and the high end one had it. Very good. Now, I don't, how many of you guys know Taylor Swift? Y'all know Taylor Swift? Can, can you hear me? So, Taylor Swift is a pop star. Most of your, your granddaughters and grandchildren probably know who she is. She's in downtown Detroit right now. And guess how much her tickets are? The lowest ticket is $950. You know what the highest ticket is? $18,000. I say I to say, you know, when customers call us and they complain about a key that's $350, say, did you see what those Taylor Swift tickets were? <laughs> She's getting paid. I'm not, I'm not mad at her. She can get it. Great. I think Beyonce got almost more, just as much as that. But I, I said it to say, sometimes customers call us and they, we give them a price and they complain. A lot of us, as you know, we're busy. So it's, it's to a point now where we really have, a, I think, a better advantage now because not to say we're gouging people or anything like that, but we need to charge what we're worth. A lot of us have a lot of experiences in here, and we really need to charge what we're worth. Also, um, the Grand Prix, I always like to leave a little good notes about Detroit. So the Grand Prix was very successful. I think it brought in $80 million to the Detroit area, and that was last week. So they actually, it used to be on Belle Isle, so most of the, or not in Detroit. Belle Isle is an island that's separated from the city. It's kind of like I think they have one in New York. So very few cities have an island where you can actually have a race. So it's no longer it was no longer on Belle Isle. It was in the streets of downtown Detroit. Very successful. It was more access because with Belle Isle, there's one way in and one way out. So it was very um, very controlled. So I'm I'm glad they sent it back in the streets because it's it, it created a lot more buzz and it was a lot more crowd. And I got a chance to see some of this action down there, but I had to put it on my headphones because it was very loud. But if you like cars, you like stuff, it was a lot of good stuff going there. And last but not least, I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I know you guys have children now and um, grown kids mostly, but I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Is there anything else I missed or anybody want anything they want to say? Because the next time we meet in September and just to kind of whet your appetites, Hopefully we can have Wayne Winton come here personally, in person, maybe have a Zoom to do what they call all things leashy. So every leashy tool that you want to bring, whether it's automotive, residential, we're going to be working with leashy. And I'm going to try to reach out to the manufacturer, see if we can get some, maybe some stands set up in here and just do some on hands-on things. So most of us learn by on, on hand stuff. And leashy is a great tool. I actually found out about leashy through Aloha. I was at a lower convention. Everybody was saying, Leashy, Leashy, Leashy. This was back in 2018. I used to tour back way, way before then. I had no idea what Leashy I said, what is Leashy? And so they started explaining to me, it's a very delicate tool. And they said, you're probably going to break the first one you use because if you're heavy handed, but Leashy is a, it's a game changer. For those that don't remember, back in the day, when you used to make a key for automobile or door lock, what did you have to do? impression it or dig in that door and cut your fingers up and pull that lock out and read the cuts because sometimes the lock was so rusty you had to replace it you couldn't even impression it was just it was impossible but, it, but the only bad thing about leash is that 
Many times with leash, if the lock is really old, it doesn't work very well. If it's a lot of rust in there. Yes. Yes. Rich, you have something? Yes. Yes. So leash and easy reader, and that's, that's a good point. You always wanna have a backup plan because sometimes we, and it's another thing from the 30 years experience, and I know you guys, some of you guys have a lot more than that, but I always have a plan A, B, C, sometimes D. And when D doesn't work, I'm out of there. <laughs> but I always said it's like, because sometimes we rely on one method and we go in there and we say, we're gonna get this thing done with the leash. And then we get caught up in, I'm gonna get this done. Then our one goes, our two goes, our, and we're still, because we don't like to be defeated, right? We want to stay with it. But sometimes you've got to say, you know what? I've got to wash my hands of this. I've tried it, but A, B, C, D. I've made my emergency call. <laughs> that didn't work. And sometimes you've got to walk away from this stuff. Not, not that we want to, but sometimes it's just not worth it. I mean, we wasted four or five hours. Customers looking at us like, does everybody know what they're doing? <laughs> so it's time to walk away. <laughs> I'll never get it. The first time I put up a security storm door, it took me four hours to put up one door. And, and Dwayne Crenshaw, who's a really good friend of mine, I, I, I respect him to this day. He taught me how to, the whole locksmithing industry. He said, man, the reason why it took so long because he was overconfident. You thought you was going to be out of there in an hour. This was your first door. And it was a situation where nothing in this house was square. And sometimes you go to situations where nothing is like common, nothing is normal. And so you're like, okay, this is like a Murphy's Law type of day. So the house was a square, and he showed me how to shim it and how to do it and how to make it work. But I was so out done. I said, man, maybe I'm not fit for this industry. But here it is 30 years later, I'm still doing it. So I say all that to say that sometimes, you know, you just got to gotta walk away from this stuff. And as we get older, we don't have the patience. We become the angry locksmith sometimes. So they call us, what do you want? <laughs> okay, call somebody else. You know, you don't, you don't want to get to that point. Food helps. Walking away helps, taking walks, slowing down a little bit, that all helps. Taking classes helps tremendously. The more, like you said, sometimes you gotta over-prepare. Over-preparation helps out a lot. And that's all I wanted to say. Nobody else has anything else to say? Anything else? Well, we're gonna conclude this meeting. Is there a motion to end the meeting or to conclude the meeting? We have a motion. A second. All right. Well, guys, have a great summer. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in September.